All right, so for optimization, that means that you're maximizing or minimizing something. So your first step is you're gonna write an equation for what is being optimized. So for example, if it says, what is the maximum area? You need to write an equation for area. If they say, what is the minimum cost? You need to write an equation for cost. So like whatever it is they tell you to maximize or minimize, you need to write an equation for that. In terms of one variable. So if there are two variables, you need to substitute one of them out. Just like related rates, this is another situation where it's a whole lot of algebra and one step of calculus. They're like really algebra problems. The only step of calculus is where you take a derivative. Um, and that'll be your next step. You're gonna get derivative equals zero. When you do derivative equals zero, what are you finding? Critical points, good. The reason we're finding critical points is because those are what give you your relative maximums and minimums. And that's what we're trying to find, maximums and minimums. So you write an equation for whatever's being optimized. If you have to do a little bit of algebra, so be it. Derivative equals zero, boom, okay? So number one, two numbers have a sum of 20. What is their maximum product? We want to maximize the product. So I'm gonna use P for product, P equals, what does product mean you're doing with the two numbers? Multiplying them. I'm gonna call them X and Y. So it would be X times Y. Some of you may already know the answer. Go with me though, because I want you to understand the process so that you can apply it to other problems. Now, the problem is that's two variables, X and Y. So we're gonna use this other piece of information. They have a sum of 20. What does that mean we're doing with them? Adding good, so X plus Y equals 20. You're gonna solve for one or the other. It doesn't matter which one, which variable do you wanna get by itself? I really don't care. X. Okay, get X by itself. You're gonna subtract over the Y. So you have X equals 20 minus Y and you're gonna substitute that in for X. So that is gonna give you product equals 20 minus Y times Y. And we're gonna distribute the Y through there. And then it is derivative equals zero. Believe it or not, that's the step that people skip most often. And it's the only step that's calculus. So please try not to do that. It's derivative equals zero. Like they skip the only thing that's calculus. Derivative would be what? Perfect. 20 minus 2y equals zero. And then solve it. You would add over the 2y. Correct. There's no like dx or dt or anything like that. The reason why not is because you get it in terms of one variable, so you don't have to get it there. And so y would be what? 10. And so x would be what? Uh, well, they want to sum up to be 20. So if this one's 10, that one's 10. Oh, you jumped straight to the answer. You're ahead of me. Hold on a second. Uh, y is 10 and X is 10. So the product 10 times 10 is 100. So if everything works out nicely, the best or the most optimal, I should say, the most optimal rectangle is going to be a square. Does that make sense? Okay. So for example, if it said that the two numbers had a sum of 18, what would the two numbers be? And their products would be so you can kind of do it without doing any work. And that's what I'm leading you towards on this one. I don't know why I left so much space for this, okay? A rectangle has a perimeter of 48 feet. What is the maximum area? It's not gonna be a rectangle, it's gonna be a, which actually a square is a type of rectangle. But here's your square. It has a perimeter of 48 feet. That means each side would be how much? Yeah, each side would be 12 feet. And so it, you're being asked for the maximum area. What would be the area 
144. Now this one has units, so we do need to put units. Feet squared, good, since it is two dimensional. Now I'm gonna mess with you, okay? Um, the best, or I should say the most optimal rectangle is gonna be a square, unless if we change the problem a little bit. What would be the maximum area of that same rectangle that we just talked about, except you only need to create three of the sides. What I mean is the fourth side is given to you. So you're given the fourth side. So for example, that side's given and we only need to build these three sides. It's not gonna be a perfect square anymore because that messes with it. So we're gonna have to actually work this one out. So again, I would use X and Y. You can choose the variables, but that's what I would say. Um, and we still want to maximize the area. So the area is gonna be X times Y, you know, it's length times width. And we have to substitute out one of the variables. Well, what did we say these all added up to? It was 48, right? So now it's X plus two Y equals 48. because all we're creating, all we're being asked to create are those three sides. So now I said before, it doesn't matter which variable you solve for, and that's still true, but which one's easier to solve for? Yeah, X. So X is 48 minus two Y. And you're gonna take that and substitute it in for X. So again, it's, it's algebra. Like we haven't even done any calculus yet. The derivative is the only thing that will be calculated. So area is 48 minus 2y times y. And then you'll distribute the y. And then to get your critical point, again, that's what gives you maximums or minimums or the critical points. You're going to do derivative equals 0. So this derivative would be 48 minus 4y equals zero. So you would add over the four Y and Y is 12. So you're probably like, hey, it still came out to be 12. Well, look at your picture. Y is 12. So if both of those are 12, that adds up to be 24, but we have 48 feet. So what is this one gonna be? It'll be 24. So it's 12 by 24. So your area would be 12 times 24, which I would let you use a calculator for. I have it written down though, what is it? 288. And again, the units would be feet squared. All right, so for this next one, a box is made from an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So a piece of paper the size of what we're writing on here um, by cutting squares of equal size out of the corners. So if you imagine cutting squares out of the corners of this piece of paper and then like folding the sides up to create a three dimensional box, are you visually seeing that there? Okay. So we wanna draw a picture of that. Try and make that a little bit more perfect here. And what you're gonna imagine happening is that we're gonna cut four equal squares out of the sides. And so what would happen is these sides would bend upwards and you'd end up with a three dimensional box that you could like put them in. So we wanna find the maximum volume. So that means we need to write an equation for volume. And what I'm gonna use for my variable is X and I'm gonna call X this amount that's getting cut out. So like each of these squares would be X by X. You have to call that amount that you're cutting something. Um, so I'm gonna use X for my variable. So how do you find the volume of a box three dimensionally? Perfect, length, width, height. All right, let's do the length first. The length of the paper was 11 inches. So from here to here, it was 11 inches. But I cut X out of each side. 
So how would I write what this amount is? Like what the length that's left for the side of the box is? Good, 11 minus two X, because you cut an X out of each side. Thank you for staying with me on that. All right, and then the width was eight and a half. But again, you cut X out of each side. So what's left, minus two X, perfect. So that's length times width. Now the height, you fold this up, the height is gonna be X. It'll be that amount, that whatever you cut out and fold it up, now it's vertical, that would be X. Okay, algebra time, you have to multiply that all together. You're gonna be okay. First thing we're gonna do is, is FOIL. I call this FOIL, first outside, inside, last, we'll multiply this all together. All right, 11 times eight and a half. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I'm letting you have a calculator for this one. So 11 times eight and a half. 93.5. All right, and then we're gonna do the outsides and the insides. So that would be minus 22X and then minus uh, 17X. So it would be minus 39X and then negative 2X times negative 2X plus 4X squared. And then you still have that other X hanging on at the end there. So distribute that through there. And then we finally finish the algebra. So now calculus, do derivative equals zero. So our derivative will be 93.5 uh, minus 78X plus 12x squared, we want to set that equal to zero. And here's why the calculator is necessary. That doesn't factor, so you can't do it by hand. I guess if you really wanted, you could do a quadratic formula, but you're allowed a calculator. So here's what I'd like you to do is go to y equals, clear it out, and we're going to put that derivative into y1. And you'll get a parabola because it's a squared, because of the x squared. So we're gonna end up with a parabola. It's gonna go off the um, window though. So it'll, you'll actually just look like two lines, but it'll be a parabola. I always hit zoom six, that's zoom standard. Um, so zoom number six. Let's see, is it gonna graph? There we go. All right, so again, it, it just looks like two lines, but are you understanding it's a parabola? You got that, all right. There's two critical points. How do we know which one we want? Well, we want to maximize the volume. A maximum happens when the derivative changes from what to what. Maximum is from what to what. Positive to negative. That would be this one right here. Do you see from positive to negative? It's cool, I'm scared I'm gonna pick the other one. If you do, when you plug it back in at the end, you will get a negative volume and you'll go, oh, whoops, it was the other one. Okay, so as long as you're paying attention and you realize that there's no such thing as a negative volume, that would be like an unbox, okay? Uh, so calculating that. Here's how we get our calculator to give us that. Or does anyone remember what buttons you're gonna hit? Second trace, it says cal right above that. We want a zero, so choice number two. I don't like to mess with the cursor, so I just do this manually. It looks like that's in between one and two. Are you seeing that there? All right, so for left bound, hit one enter. For right bound, hit two enter. And then for guess, hit 1.5 enter. Yeah, I don't like messing with the cursor because you know how sometimes you can't find it on there? So if it looks like your zero is between one and two, for left bound, hit one enter. For right bound, hit two enter. For guess, one and a half or anything in between them, and it'll come up. All right, did you all get 1.585? Okay, so X equals, 1.585 inches. That's the amount that you would cut out of the corners. If you want the actual volume, which we do, you have to take that and plug it back into the original equation. Here's the nice thing that the calculator does for you. This is absolutely fantastic. Right now, as of this moment, as long as we don't do anything else, it has X 
stored as that for us. You don't have to store it, it did it. So if you clear out of here and go back to the main screen, you can type, yeah, it does it for you. You can type this original equation, 11 minus 2x, 8.5 minus 2x times x, and it will plug that value in for you. Not even truncated, like the whole thing, like it will literally just do it for you. Now you can't mess around with anything in between because if you mess with it, then it won't be stored anymore. But as long as you do it right away, it'll store it for you. All right, so what's our volume? Good, 66.148. Nice, before I could do that. Inches cubed. Cubed because it's a volume, which is three dimensional. So a rectangular tank has an open top. So that means that there's not like a lid on it. The width is four meters, all right? So, and I'm gonna attempt to draw this as best I can here, but here's the rectangular prism that is this tank. There, that's pretty good. All right, so the width is four meters. It's really big. It's like a, a huge tank that like a really rich person would have, like a huge expensive one, or like maybe the aquarium or something. So the width is four meters. The volume is 36 cubic meters. I'm just gonna kind of write that off to the side. It's cubic because that's volume, it's three-dimensional. And then we're told the cost of the materials for the bottom of the tank and the cost of the materials for the sides of the tank. What is the minimum cost? Cost is what we're trying to optimize. We want the minimum cost. So we need to write an equation for cost. Now I need some variables in here for length, width, and height of the tank. The width is four, so good, that's a value. I'm gonna call this dimension X and then the height Y. You can call it whatever you want. I usually just go with X and Y. So let's do the bottom of the tank first. The bottom costs $10 per square meter. So it's gonna be 10 times the area of the bottom of the tank. So just the bottom of the tank would be four by X. Are you following me? They're four times X, all right, so four X. So that's the bottom of the tank. Plus, now when we go to do the sides, we can't do all four at once because they're different sizes. So let's do this side and then this side together. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the front and the back, or I don't know what you want to call those, but let's do those two together. All right, so that costs $5 per square meter. There are two of them. There's the front and the back. And what is the dimension for that side? For Y, good. Plus, all right, now we're gonna do like the left side and the right side, like this dimension. So again, the sides cost $5 per square meter. There's two of them, it's the left and the right. And what is the dimension of that side? X times Y. All right, cool, we got through that. That's the hard part. Now let's clean that up a little bit. Cost equals 40X plus, uh, what is that, 40Y? Five times two is 10 times four is 40, 40Y plus 10XY. So here's the problem. You have an X and a Y and you have to get it in terms of one variable. So we're gonna go back to this other piece of information that they gave us. The volume is 36 cubic meters. Volume would be length times width times height. So that would be 4xy equals 36. Do you want to get x by itself or y by itself? It is not going to make a difference. x, okay. That means we're going to divide both sides by 4y and x will equal 9 over y. 36 divided by 4 gives you 9. y is in the denominator, so over y. So you're gonna take this nine over Y and plug it in, substitute it everywhere that there's an X, all both of them. So we'll get cost equals 40 times nine over Y plus 40Y plus 10 times nine over Y times Y. So we just plug that in, we substituted it. And now again, I'm gonna clean that up a little bit more before we do the derivative. Again, we haven't done any calculus yet. 
So 40 times nine, that would be 360 over y. I'm gonna write it as 360y to the negative one, because if we're gonna do a power rule, it helps if you have that written as a power. Plus 40y plus, now what's kind of nice about this one? Yeah, the y's cancel. All right, so plus 90, so that turned out nice. All right, phew, we got through all the algebra. We survived. Now the derivative, c prime, all right? You would bring this negative down, it would be negative 360. And then what would be the new exponent? Good, so I'm gonna write it as negative 360 over y squared. I'm just fixing that negative exponent. All right, plus 40, and then that's it, equals zero. All right, so I'm going to um, add over this 360 over y squared. I'm going to add that to the other side. Nearly there. What next? Yep, times y squared. Divide by 40. And so y, oh yes, 9. And so y is 3. Normally you would put plus and minus when you square root, but we don't do negative. I mean, you can't have a negative side of a tank, right? So three, so let's see what X is. I would look back right here. X is nine over Y. So if Y is three, what's X? Shocking, I know that they came out to the same thing, right? And then we need to figure out the cost. You have, four different equations for cost. Do you see all of these? Take your pick which one you want to plug into. Which one do you think looks easiest? Maybe the second one? Okay, everywhere there's an X or a Y, you're going to put three. So 40 times three would be 120 plus another 120 plus 10 times three times three, 10 times nine would be 90. Slap the dollar sign cash money in front of that. 120 and 120, do you remember me saying that in free cash money? 240 plus 90, 330. So that tank costs $330, which fair, because it was huge. 